Okay, first up. Okay, so our, our new products this week, they're coming soon, but we'll have them shortly. Some stuff is uh, held up in an airport. But this is uh, fun. So we have this RP2040 trinket, uh, trinky, and um, we designed it to be the same size and shape as most of our STEM QT boards. And so you might be like, wow, what if I want to make a custom trinky? Because we made like, you know, a, a you know, rotary encoder trinky, and we made a, um, uh, key trinky and we you know we're gonna make other trinkies but what if you're like i want to make a sensor trinky like you want something with a bme 280 and you want to just plug into your computer and have data come out well um in that case you would want to attach it uh this sensor on and then you can just use your well this is a long cable but you can get the little shorty version of the cable you put the cable like this and now you've got a um what i like to call a no solder solution because you just bolted it on with this little bolt kit um, whatever sensor or device you like onto the uh, STEM IQT friendly um, trinky and you plug this into USB and then you write code for this uh, to spit data out over USB and you've got your little like USB connected sensor. So it solves, you know, a little mm. bit of the problem, like I call this the um, fidgets issue where it's like, you can get sensor data into a microcontroller but sometimes you just want it into a computer and, and how's the easiest way to do it, so. Let me give you some bolts. Basically, it's a little stacky kit, and of course you can, it, the way it's designed is you can stack multiple ones, because it's got like the standoff, wow. and the screws, and the hex nuts. So this is just the kit, but what it's designed for, and you can use it for other stuff too, but what it's designed for is to stack sensors on top of your RP2040 Trinky to make a custom Trinky. Okay, next up. Next up, we've got an OLED. People love OLEDs, we love OLEDs. Uh, we've been carrying OLEDs for a very long time. Some of our first products were OLEDs. Um, this is a 128 by 128 monochrome OLED um, using the SH1107 chipset. Uh, it connects over I2C over SPI uh, because it does I2C and a lot of people uh, are happy to use I2C. We put STEMI QT sense uh, connectors on it and so you see it running the demo connected to this uh, STEMI QT and this is the Arduino code but it's also supported in Arduino. Um, you see a little bit of flickering of course that's not visible. That's always webcam and webcam. internet stuff but our Community is really smart, but sometimes there's new folks who come along. I like to say it, and they're it, like, "Yeah, no, we should always say flicker. it. We should always say it. It actually really doesn't like. flicker with real eyeballs." And I think people use that too now with like because they're filming TV. Yeah, they see stuff, stuff on TV. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, so we got uh, support for it. Um, it's about 1.1 inch diagonal. Um, this is the board on it, and uh, you can use it with a breadboard or just plug and play. Um, 128 by 128, it's, we don't have, uh, most OLEDs are 128 by 32 or 128 by 64. So we like this nice big square shape. It could make for a nice watch, for example, could be a yeah. one. Okay, and the stars of the show tonight, Lady Ada, besides you, our community, our team, our customers, and everybody's hanging out with us tonight is, we got a couple new feathers. New feathers. Okay, so this is twinsy feathers. There's two feathers and they look so similar. So we talk about both of them at the same time. Um, because they're basically the same design, but there's like one little thing different. So this is the ESP32 S2 Feather. It's a little bit kind of a year in the making. It took me a little bit of time to, to get this design out, um, but I really wanted to wait until we could get the ESP32 S2 modules, the, the mini modules as shown here, with PS RAM in them. So these, the two feathers here have four megabytes of flash memory and two megabytes of PS RAM. So that's RAMs you can use to buffer data. It's great for CircuitPython. It's great for Arduino because um, the ESP32 S2 chip like just thinks it has two megabytes of RAM. So you can read massive amounts of data or get camera information and, and parse it, or you can um, buffer multiple displays all in RAM. Um, this uh, Feather, um, of course, it features the ESP32 S2 with native USB, which we love because it's a Wi-Fi chipset like the ESP32, but it has native USB so you can have it act like a keyboard or a mouse or a disk drive. Um, you can also program it over USB and do debugging over USB. And with the mini modules, it makes for an adorable feather. You can see everything fits quite nicely and it's exactly feather sized. And we had a little bit of space in the middle. So first up, if you want to add sensors and more, there's a STEM IQT port in the middle sticking up. Uh, so you can see that OLED uh, that we also released this week. Um, pointing, uh, plugged into the center. Um, you can connect sensors, OLEDs, displays, whatever you like. And also there's a version of this feather 
that has a built-in, uh, here you can see in the center, a BME 280 sensor. That's a barometric pressure, temperature, and humidity sensor. Um, we even have a demo, you know, if you uh, want, you can, um, you know, basically go into deep sleep in between reads to keep the board nice and cool, wake up, get a sensor reading from the sensor, connect to Wi-Fi, send the data to Adafruit IO or wherever you want to send on the internet and then power down. So that would make it perfect for environmental ambient um, uh, sensing, like environmental sensing, without having to plug in any extra hardware at all. Um, but it's more expensive. So that's why we have two versions. One is the less expensive, no BME 280, and one is the more expensive with BME 280. So I thought I would um, show off some of the things on the overhead. So of course it has um, battery support. So let's go to the overhead and I'll show this. Okay, so we've got here, um, this is the one that has the BME 280 sensor. So of course it's got uh, battery support and we tried to make this uh, low power friendly. So for example, there's a transistor um, down here that you can use to turn off power to the I2C port and the onboard sensor. Um, and uh, that way when you go into deep sleep mode, you're, you know, if there's any sensors plugged in, you don't have that quiescent current. Um, so you can get down to, I think, like 40 or 50 microamps uh, of current um, while in sleep mode. There's also a battery monitor here. So this is a very low power battery monitor chip over I2C that will um, give you the battery voltage, but also the percentage. It actually does like tracking of the voltage. So it does like a smart analysis of what the um, battery capacity is or state of charge. Um, this demo is showing reading the temperature, humidity, and uh, barometric pressure off of the BME 280 sensor in the middle there. It's got, you know, the LiPo battery, battery charging, uh, the boot and reset button. Um, so you can go into bootloader mode. I think, yeah, here's a reset button. So you can see here, uh, there's a little NeoPixel. Uh, this is trying to do the bootloader recognition. And it's like, oh, I'm not going to do a computer. There's a uh, red LED here. There's a charge LED. Um, uh, 600 milliamp uh, regulator, the AP2112. Um, when we get the, uh, we're going to change over to the RT3080 when we can get those chips, but they're a uh, silicon shortage out. So for now, uh, we're using the AP2112. And of course, um, the feather pinout you know and love. So um, I squared C and SPI and UART um, and analog inputs and all the stuff you, you love about uh, the feather format. And we tested it against all of our feathers and it works wonderfully. So if you, that's you know, cool. basically want a feather that's all in one IoT, low power friendly, Arduino friendly, Circuit Python friendly, and uh, you know, of course, STEM IQT uh, plugs in nicely in the so center. So I ever wanted, and I like that there's a vertical STEM plug in too. Yeah, like, well, we were nice we, board, like we bought board. those uh, vertical plugs, yeah. and Fab was like, "When are we going to use it?" And I'm like, "Soon, soon." Yeah. Um, but I just really love the little mini version of the ESP32 S2 module um, because it means we had that extra space in the center for. Uh, sensor, you know, optional sensor and STEM IQT. Yeah. Um, so check this out. We are going to be making tons of these. Uh, they're going to be really popular for sure. And we have a couple of variants also of the ESP32 S2 Feather. But having the PS RAM is key, especially for Circuit Python. You really need that extra two megabytes um, to be able to read data from the internet, parse it, and and do graphic stuff if you need to as well. So I think it's worth the wait. That's the price.